So most of y'all are probably asking the question, is my last name really Chu? Has anybody thought about that today? All right, so first of all, my last name is Chu, and I'm not Asian, amen? <laughs> Somebody was like, man, he said, I thought I was going to see an Asian person, man. And I was like, nah, it's a black guy. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Chef Chu, and as I always say, going to give you something to chew on. And so I've actually, uh, my company is called Something Better, and we manufacture an amazing plant-based protein solution, and we also create the most amazing vegan restaurants and urban centers in the country. And we started right in California, right in Oakland. And we also, our company is actually a, a public benefit corporation. Um, make sure this goes right. Help me out. Okay, here you go. So yeah, our company is actually a public benefit corporation, which is actually a very missional approach to going into business. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But tell you about a little bit about myself. I'm actually was, I was raised a hardcore southern country boy. I mean, I ate every meat you can think of. I mean, fried chicken, ribs, pork chops, ham, bacon. We even ate squirrels. I don't know if I ever had a squirrel before. <laughs> so that's how I grew up. My father actually, believe it or not, as, er, as late as 1980, in the 1980s, my father was still sharecropping in the 1980s. I mean, very, very rural, um, but this country folk. Um, but sadly, due to the excessive meat consumption, um, this actually had a detrimental impact on my family, meaning we had a lot of disease in my family. My father died a few years back from different cancers in his body. Most of my family members died before the age of 60, heart disease, um, saw him on dialysis. A lot of it was actually obviously caused because of the, the diet, and many of the diseases were preventable. Anybody ever experienced that? And obviously it has a detrimental impact on the health, on the environment as well. And so I began, again, back in 2001, I became a vegan um, almost 18 years ago. Um, and amazingly, at that time, again, I was raised around Adventism, but I wasn't actually an Adventist. My mother and father wasn't Adventist, but my uncles and aunts were. So I actually had the experience of growing up, going to church on the Sabbath, wasn't an Adventist, but I had the experience of eating the Loma Linda uh, hot dogs and, and all the different veggie meats. And for me at that time, again, when you ate an actual Big Frank, a real Big Frank, and you eat your first veggie dog, it tasted like lab-made pet food for me. I mean, it just, it didn't, didn't really, uh, you know, this wasn't something that I really enjoyed. And so, again, I began a journey. I wanted to have the experience. I, I mean, I used to go to KFC and get the 50-piece barbecue chicken. I don't know if I ever did that before. And eat every single piece of the barbecue. Amen? Come on now. That was me, right? I had my barbecue sauce, and I would dip it and eat it, and I ate a lot of meat. Popeyes. My father, I told him, I love my father, man, but he died a few years back. But he's on his deathbed, and he said, take me to Popeyes. I'm like, come on, pop. But it wasn't a time and place, amen? Not for a sermon. So anyway, I began a 15-year journey, thousands of experiments, to understand the secrets of why I love meat so much. And I discovered the three secrets of why I love meat so much. But here's all, before I tell you the secrets, here's how I found out. Here's what it says. But as intelligent cooks do their best to enlighten others, the Lord will give them skill and what? Understanding. The word of the Lord is, forbid them not, for I will reveal myself to them as their instructor. It has been presented to me that men and women of capability were being taught of who? Of God, how to prepare wholesome, palatable foods in an acceptable manner. Amen? amen. Easy dub. Amen. That's what my man uh, uh, Jeff said earlier. This is something that I read in 2001, that there was a prophet named Ellen White that said that somehow we were going to be taught by the Holy Spirit to create foods that would change the world. And so God taught me how to create something. And so the experience, those three things that I learned that people love when it comes to eating meat and that we can make when it comes to eating healthy protein options, plant-based protein options, are actually texture, taste, and appearance. Again, texture, taste, and appearance. And so we've created the best-tasting plant-based protein solution with the texture and taste that satisfies your body's desire for meat. And it looks and it tastes and it feels like meat and is made with whole food ingredients that you can pronounce. We call our product Better Chew. We says better texture, better taste, better chew. It looks like chicken. It tastes like chicken. But guess what? It ain't chicken. It's crispy on the outside and it's white in the middle. Oh, it's delicious. Amen? <laughs> in all glory, all glory goes to God. Having a hard time with the clicker here. Here it says this. 
The Lord calls upon those who are in positions of trust. And so, again, my journey goes here. So I literally, again, started this long journey, learned how to make these amazing meats. Eventually, I actually got into the restaurant business, a serial restaurateur. Um, And eventually, uh, amazingly, a few years back, I actually, at ASI, I met a conference official. Today, we're going to be talking about something called centers of influence. What is that called? Centers of influence. You may have heard that term kind of coined or coupled with mission to the cities. Um, But I met a a conference official from years back at ASI. But this is kind of what it says. And I I like to say, I like like to do something called living the page. When you read prophecy, when you read uh, Ellen White's writings, look at yourself in that page that all those promises in the scriptures, all those promises in the spirit of prophecy are things that God can do in your life. Amen? The Lord calls upon those who are in positions of trust, those to whom he has entrusted his precious gifts, to use their talents of intellect and means in his service. Our workers should present before these men a plain statement of our plan of labor, telling them what we need in order to help the poor and needy to establish the work on a firm basis. Some of you all might be right now have a, have a plan that you've worked on, that you've been testing, that you've been believing in. Know that God, in the, when the opportunity comes, you might be before someone that has the opportunity to help you to accomplish that dream. And so it says that some of these, not all, but who? Some of these will be impressed by what? The Holy Spirit to invest the Lord's means in a way that will advance his cause. It says they will fulfill his purpose by helping to create what? Cent- create centers of influence in the large cities. Then it says interested workers will be led to offer themselves for various lines of missionary effort. And so amazingly, again, in 2012, I came to uh, the ASI convention. And at that time, there was a conference official who had, uh, they had just started an initiative called the Bridges to the Bay Initiative, um, Bay Area for Jesus. And some of you all might have been a part of that. Anybody was a part of the Bay Area for Jesus Initiative? Amen. And so this was a coalition between Central California and Northern California to present Jesus Christ to a, the most, one of the most secular cities in America. And this is San Francisco Bay Area. And so in Oakland, I'm actually in the Oakland Territory, um, in Northern California Conference, I was able by amazing circumstances, the Lord allowed us to get an investment from the conference. Amen. You guys better get up and shout hallelujah, Amen. <laughs> I don't know if you know any conference out here would give over $200,000 to a young brother that's trying to do something for the Lord. Amen? That's a miracle. Amen? Come on now. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so, again, we started something called the Veg Hub. And the Veg Hub became an amazing ministry. And we're going to share a little bit about that story. And this is what it says. I I read these statements years ago, and I I remember when I was going to California, I was living in Arkansas. I was a pastor, and I also had a food company in Arkansas at the time. This is in 2013, 2012, before I went to uh, California. But I read these statements that said, there is a work to be done in California, a work that has been what? Strangely neglected. Let this work be delayed no longer. As doors open for the presentation of truth, let us be ready to enter. As soon as possible, well-organized efforts should be put forth in different sections of of what? This city and also in Oakland. Other restaurants similar to the one on Market Street should be open in San Francisco and in where? Oakland. When was that written, everybody? 1901. what? Now, how many vegan restaurants do you know that's owned by Seven Adventists in this country? Anybody know of any? Maybe a few. I got my friends here. They have one. But you can't, they, your, your hand will not get filled up. We can't get past 10. Literally. And here we're living in an age, and I'm going to show you some slides of how veganism, plant-based eating, is is at its highest demand than it's ever been. And where are we as innovative young adults going out, creating solutions for communities, and can also support yourself financially at the same time? Right now, the vegan market is increasing 6.6% every single year over year right now. The U.S. market is set to reach $5.2 billion by 2020. And this was more so, so much more exciting than this is that 70% of the world's population is saying that they need to eat less meat. And we have the health methods. And we don't like it. (laughs) We are ashamed of it. We want to eat not going to say it. We're ashamed of it. And we, I believe, we have a golden opportunity right now as a church to put us on the, pl- on the map, to put us on an- another platform. Man, this thing don't like me today. I'll say it again? Oh, leave that at the computer. Okay, gotcha. 
Oh, I had to confirm. Okay, my bad. Okay, there you go. So, again, we're in a position right now that God has placed us in. I like to say it's a prophetic opportunity that God has placed us in to do something amazing in the world. So, again, I, I literally have been a restaurateur. I started my first restaurant in 2008 called Eating to Live. started another restaurant in 2012 called uh, Something Better. And now we started our last restaurant in something, uh, as Veg Hub in 2016. We launched that in uh, December 2016. One thing I've learned about restaurants is that if you don't have a plan, you will, guess what? You will plan to what? Fail. When, you, when it comes to doing any kind of, of, of work for God, well-organized plans are key. You have to understand the business that you're in because my rent every single month in for my for my lease is five thousand dollars every single month. My payroll every single month is less almost fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars a month. Payroll. You get the math, right? Now I'm talking about electricity. Electricity is another fifteen hundred dollars a month in gas. So I have to literally produce every single month about thirty thousand dollars to be able to get to a break even point in my business in the Bay Area. Rent's $2,500 a month, personal rent. Now, I wish I used to live in Arkansas. My first house when I got married was $400 a month, man. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You move to California, man, you about to. So the point I'm getting at is that, <laughs> well, let me get started. But um, so you better have a business plan, right? Because it's not cheap. And you're going against, I mean, again, you understand what you're doing. Don't mean you have to understand everything, but you have to take time to understand your business. Some of you all who might want to do whatever that calling might be, find a mentor. We've been talking about mentorship. Find a mentor. Somebody wants to be a restaurateur, give me a call. Come work with me for a few months. But the key is understand the, 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 the thing that you're going to go into, and you must, I like to say, you have to master what you do. Don't be second rate at what you do. Master your craft to the point, where, again, where, where God can use that thing, not just to make you money in your pockets, but be a, a tool for God in these last days. Again, so what I did, again, uh, in order for me to get the money from the conference, man, I can sit here for three hours and share with you what the conference put me through. Imagine moving to California, and they promised me literally over t- almost $200,000 to start this restaurant. And when I get there, they say, through mis- somehow communication, the money is not available. I left Arkansas. I moved to California with a, with a child, and when I get to California, somehow through miscommunication with administration, they tell me that, guess what, the money's not available. What would you do? Go back to Arkansas, right? I couldn't. I gave up my pastoral job. I gave up my restaurant. All that was moved. I moved on for this new dream that God had called me to do. At that point, I'm, I'm, I'm literally in, in California. No, no money at this point. I'm staying with a friend. I had first met Mike Tuazon, this is like four years ago. And again, I don't know what God is going to do, but I'm praying that God can open some doors. And so amazingly, man, I'm telling you, again, I came to California with $10,000 in my pocket. And, and literally in four months, I'm almost dead broke. $2,000 left in my bank account. First thing I did, and I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it as a man, I called mama. <laughs> I said, Ma, I need some money, mama. I got a kid, I got a wife, and I need some help. Mama gave me $2,000, amen? Can we say amen for the moms out there, amen? Amen. Mama gave me $2,000. Now watch this. I'm almost nearly broke, almost down to zero, right? My mama gave me $2,000. In this same two weeks, let me say what God did for me. Same two weeks. Now I'm, I'm looking to sick this out. I literally went to file my taxes. I normally get maybe $800, $1,000 back. This year, I go and file my taxes. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go see what happens. It's about April right now. Let me see what happens. Go to the tax lady. Lady looks at me and says, Mr. Shu, you know, you, you, you're going to get back $6,000. Like, price is right. $6,000. I came home to my wife. I said, babe, 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 $6,000. So do the math. I got 10000 in my account when I come. I'm down to almost zero. My mama gives me how much, y'all? 2000 The tax lady gives me how much? 6000 Now I go, at this point, I was in Arkansas before I moved to California. I'm at a stop sign. A lot of you not. Driving Miss Daisy comes and hits my car. I mean, just bam. I'm at a stop sign, y'all. I mean, she just bam, right running into my car. She ran into my car. And I, I was like, I had no time to deal with it. I get to California. I said, I'm going to deal with it. Finally, it took me four months to finally go to the tax to the insurance company and say, okay, what can I do about my car? They said, Mr. Sue, okay, fine. We got, we're going to take care of you. Uh, we said, listen, you can go to any dealership or any, uh, you know, uh, collision place and get it fixed. Or uh, you can get uh, 
$1,600. Now, which one would you choose? I was like, I don't even see the dent. I don't even know where it's at. <laughs> I forgot. I, I could, even to this day, I don't know where the dent is at. Never got fixed. Still driving the same Prius, 2006 Prius. I'm keeping it real. But I took that $1,600, you do the math, 6000 2000 $1,600. How much is that, y'all? $9,600. It's not over yet, and this is in two weeks. Two weeks. Next thing you know, the Lord now, I get checks in the mail in this same two-week time frame. I got three checks, one from the, uh, the electric company, one from Comcast. These checks total almost $300 like, plus. Dollars. I'm almost right back to guess what, y'all? $10 thousand dollars was in my bank account in two week time frame i'm not working no job i'm waiting on god to do something i'm, I'm about to start my i used to be a landscaper years back i'm about to pick up going about to go buy some shovels and some rakes and the lord put ten thousand dollars in my account finally the conference came through and i got literally um they they got a, got a grant from the nad we got a grant from the union and we got uh, some money from the Northern California Conference, and the Lord provided what I could not do for myself. But he let me know something. He says, Chef Chu, G.W. Chu, you, my son, I am going to take care of you. When father and mother forsake you, when conferences forsake you, when, when whoever forsakes you, I will provide. God has a thousand ways in which we know not how he can provide for his children. And God did that for me. And so we created the veg hub, and we went, and, when I, and finally the money came through. I went in my closet. I literally spent four months, I mean literally in my closet, creating a restaurant that would not fail. And I created a 300-page owner's man, operations manual. It was a little overkill, I would, I would admit. Don't need to be 300 pages, but it was 300 pages, amen? And I was like, this restaurant's going to be exciting. So, again, through delay, through disappointment, through prayer, through perseverance, God, when we opened that restaurant, we had a line around the door. Amazing. I mean, people were just so excited about this vegan restaurant that was coming to town. If you see the picture right here, you see the picture to the left, that restaurant right beside it was an actual McDonald's. The McDonald's shut down three months before we actually opened up. It gave a great story. It was like, oh, a McDonald's shuts down. And the Veg Hub opens up. <laughs> a vegan restaurant right next to old McDonald's. That was a great story, man. So we got great footage. That's us and uh, the, the, the city uh, council uh, vice mayor. We're cutting the ribbon together. That's Dr. Woodson, who was actually instrumental. That's the conference president right in the Veg Hub. And, and we got awarded some amazing awards. Uh, Local Hero Award in 2017. Impact Award in 2018. We do cooking classes and education in our restaurant. We got hundreds of five-star reviews in the community. People are so amazed at our texture and taste that God has given us. We do cooking classes in our restaurant, teaching underserved kids how to communicate how to actually eat healthy. Imagine being in East Oakland. Eat, anybody heard of East Oakland? You might know East Oakland, but that's a rough part of Oakland, right? And you're literally like 60 kids, you know, kids that's gone through a hard life. And I'm talking to these kids, telling them these same stories that I'm telling you guys today of how dreams are possible. You know, again, teaching kids. It's taking kids from all walks of life. You know, we got a great team that's doing classes with the kids. Auntie Sarah, another friend of mine who's worked with us, works with us. And so, again, we realize that God can do amazing things. Right now, our food company has blown up. Right now, Whole Foods wants us to go in literally about 100 stores, all the 43 stores in Northern California, wants us to go in Southern California. I mean, I can't, I can't explain to you what God is doing. Right now, I'm speaking right now to some of the largest plant-based uh, food investors, and, 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 and they're excited about what we're doing. But, you know, I'm committed because I realize that I don't care if a person has a billion dollars and says to me, I can give you this billion dollars. If they can't, if they're not going to follow what God wants me to do, that money is not good money. So now I'm, I'm, I'm working with a strategic team on how to create an investment program that c allows me to fulfill God's mission, fulfill a social impact, uh, you know, concept, rather than simply just taking money because it's available. And so I'm learning so much as we speak. And so our mission is to make healthy food affordable and accessible to all people. And that's our mission. And so, again, we're creating solutions of bringing healthy food to underserved communities. And so we're doing something amazing. I'm going to end on this story. Hakeem right here, 400 pounds, his wife 200 pounds. We started a food program for him in 10 weeks. Hakeem, is, I mean, Hakeem and Mary lost 20 pounds in 10 weeks eating our healthy protein products and eating a healthy lifestyle. 
And this is what I believe God wants us to do in these last days. We have a solution that can bring life to the world. And I believe that each of us has gifts and talents that he wants to use in you. So I just say to you all today, again, don't believe that your dream is not possible. Know that God is the one responsible for the results. Surrender your hearts to him and he will make himself responsible to do something so amazing, so exciting, so just delicious, so like, ugh. And I like to say, my name is Chef Chu. And as I always say, going to give you something to chew on.